we're going to be making some color diffusion filter designs and with these color diffusion designs we're going to do a number of projects with them but for today we're just going to work on this first step so all you're going to need for this is a placemat for yourself you're going to need some coffee filters um, also some washable markers Additionally, you're going to want something you can spray with, like a spray bottle with water in it, maybe an old spray bottle uh, that you can fill with water. And then uh, foam plates are an additional bonus. If you don't have them, it's doable without, but if you do have it, it's a great extra piece. What we're going to do is take one of our coffee filters and we're going to lay it flat on our placemat. And we're going to take our markers and we're actually going to color right on the filter. Um, you don't need to worry about coloring in every section of it because when we do our next step, which is going to involve the water, um, this ink is going to spread everywhere. So I think I'm going to, for this one, do some sort of rainbow design. I'm going to take my markers and I'm just going to start at the outer edge and I'm going to create a scribble using the side of my marker towards the center and I'm going to keep doing that until I go all the way around my filter. Okay, so I did one this way, do the same thing but with different colors, maybe a pattern like red and blue, red and blue, red and blue, and you can keep going all the way around that way. Um, I'm going to show you another way which is taking my coffee filter and this time I'm going to sort of draw a design. So I'm not just going to color in random colors, I'm actually going to try to draw some sort of design on my paper. Um, I'm going to start by having something in the middle, maybe I'm going to start with a star shape and then color it in. And I'm going to be working on a radial pattern. Radial means round, going in a circle. So I'm going to keep adding things to my design that would start from the center and work their way around. And I'm going to keep going until I have a design that fills up my space. take our random designs and whatever one you did decide to do as your random design and we're going to put that on a plate or newspapers and spritz that as well. All we have to do now is wait for these bad boys to dry and then we'll come back together and talk about what we're doing next. All right, here are my color diffused papers all finished and dry. As you can see, this was my rainbow one. So the color bled and spread all over the place. So it doesn't really look like it did anymore. The one I did my pattern on really changed a lot. You can see that the um, places where I had my dots, you can still see the colors and you can see where they kind of stand out, but everything just kind of really bled and kind of smeared together. So for this, Part of our project we are going to be creating monsters so you're going to decide um if you made more than one, which one is going to be good for your monster body i think that i am actually going to go with this one um and i'm going to do a rainbow monster and so what you're going to need um aside from your finished filter painting is you're going to need white paper your filter um, markers of any kind or any other coloring materials, crayons, color pencils, um, possibly googly eyes if you want, but that's not an absolute necessity, um, glue stick, scissors, and some black and white paper that you can cut up and do things with. Okay, let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is add some glue to my filter to get it onto my paper. Flip it over so it's on some sort of paper and it won't bleed through. And you're going to want to put your glue all on the outside edge. So really get to the outside edge. That is always the most important part to glue. The inside is not nearly as important as the outside. You can put a little bit of glue on the inside if you want just to be safe, but you really want it on that outside. So now I'm going to pick this up 
and I'm going to take my white paper and I'm going to try to stick it sort of in the middle of my paper. That way I have some room on top and underneath that I can do some drawing. So I'm going to use my hands to flatten this out right in place. Okay. So I have my body here. This is gonna be the body of my monster. And I wanna start by building sort of the inside of my monster first, and then I'm gonna start building things around it through drawing. So first of all, if you do have some black and white paper, I'm gonna be creating a mouth for my monster first. So what I'm gonna be doing, and you can do any shape mouth you want. You can do a blob, you can do a big circle to make your monster look surprised. Um, I'm gonna do a sort of letter D shape. So let me show you how I'm gonna do this. With my black paper, I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm gonna draw a line straight across, and then I'm gonna do underneath a curve. Now, from the side, it looks like a nice capital letter D. And I wanna make sure it's big enough that it's gonna fit inside that space nicely. I could make it even bigger if I wanted, um, but that's one shape of mouth you could do. You could do a shape mouth like this. Maybe your monster's a little bit surprised, so you want it to have a little surprise face. Um, you could just do a random blob shape too. All of those would work for mouths. It's totally up to you what type of mouth you want. Once you figure out what type of mouth you want, you're going to cut it out. Okay, and here's what the different mouths could look like. We have a nice big open mouth. We have sort of a scared mouth. We have a surprised mouth. There's lots of different types of mouths that you could do. It just depends on what kind of motion you're going for. Um, also, at this time, you're gonna wanna create eyes. You can either use actual googly eyes for your eyes or you could make the eyes using your white paper cutting out some white circles cutting out some black circles and just gluing them together to make the eyes i think i'm going to just use these googly eyes so i'm going to take my glue stick put some glue on the back and stick them where i want settled on what mouth I want. I'm going to again glue the outside edge of the mouth. Don't worry about the inside. And I'm going to glue that in place also. Now I could leave it as a big open mouth or I could get fun with this and add some teeth. So I'm going to do that. You can draw your teeth first if you want. If you want to create some triangle teeth or some square teeth, whatever shape teeth you want to have for your monster, that's fine. Or you can just dive right in and start cutting. As you notice guys, I cut off the part that I drew from this big huge sheet, so now I only have to cut these little pieces and it's a lot easier to deal with. got lots and lots of teeth here. I can decide where I want to put them, um, how many teeth I want to give my monster, all of that good stuff. Once you've decided, glue them down in place. Right, I've got my awesome monster mouth and now I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to start doing some details. Remember if you don't have a sharpie you can use regular markers. You can also use um, crayons, color pencils, whatever else you want. I'm going to add a few other fun features to my monster, some facial features and then I'm going to add maybe some hair, some body, maybe even a background scene. body. I added these funny like almost elf ears. I added a nose, some eyebrows. I added some funny arms hanging down. I gave him some hair like look like fire a little bit to me and I gave him these funny legs with stripes on it and then I added this line right here behind his legs um, and that's my horizon line. So by doing that it makes it look like my mom's sitting standing on the ground and now I could do a few more details. Maybe sun, clouds, birds. I can maybe add a few flowers or some grass whatever I want to do to finish off my design. Our 
finished monster. So I added um, a little bit of black to some of his limbs because I wanted those to stand out a little bit more. And um, I just like the background being black and white so that he is really colorful and stands right out. But if you decided you wanted to go in and add a little color, maybe to the rest of your monster's body parts. So instead of it being just black and white, we have some spots of color, maybe in the whole picture, maybe just in the body of the monster. That is totally fine too. Hope you guys had fun making this monster with me and I can't wait to see some of your colorful, wacky little creatures come to life. Have fun!